Melodic bird songs, smell of the earth after the first rain, a beautiful sunset, the warmth of a hot cup of tea, and delicious bhajis. We can enjoy these sensory pleasures thanks to our nervous system that is made up of the brain, sensory organs, neurons, and the nerve network. The nervous system is the very essence of our existence and has a lot more than letting us feel pleasure. The brain is home to emotions and the controller of essential body functions. The neurons faithfully exchange messages between the brain and other parts of the body. Theirs is a delicately balanced system. A mistake or slip in their duties can disturb the body functions either mildly like headache or temporary numbness or cause severe conditions such as Parkinson's disease. Parkinson's disease is a neurodegenerative disorder in which motor control degrades. Patients find it difficult to move and walk. Professor Samir Maji and his team at the Protein Engineering and Neurobiology Laboratory study alpha-synuclein, a protein in the brain. When alpha-synuclein aggregates or clumps, it turns toxic and kills the neurons, compromising the connection between the brain and organs. Aggregation of alpha-synuclein is associated with Parkinson's disease. Professor Maji's team found that alpha-synuclein aggregated as a result of misfolding. How alpha-synuclein misfolding aggregation happens, it's clearly not known and very complicated process. We express and purify this protein from bacteria and then take the proteins and look at in the test tube that how this protein actually misfold and get aggregates using different structural biology, biophysical tools. And then we try to establish the structure function relationship. That means that which stage of the protein actually become toxic. So also we do parallelly in the cell biological work. We overexpress the protein inside the cells and look at that how cell death happens. We try to establish the mechanisms. Professor Maji's lab discovered an important phenomenon that leads to misfolding and aggregation of alpha-synuclein. Alpha-synuclein, this unstructured protein, actually at the beginning, they make kind of liquid-liquid phase separation. That means that when you put oil in water, how they phase separate. So we show that if you put alpha-synuclein at certain concentration, they actually phase separate from liquid droplet. And this droplet actually initiate the protein aggregation. Professor Maji's lab is working on detecting alpha-synuclein aggregates and reversing their toxic effects. Their studies may eventually help in early diagnosis and treatment of Parkinson's disease. In the Computational Neurophysiology Laboratory, Professor Rohit Manchanda studies electrical signaling of excitable cells in the body. Nerve cells as well as muscle cells are very, very distinct from other cells of the body in the sense that they generate certain electrical signals that other kinds of cells cannot generate. These cells are known as excitable cells. They are very, very sensitive to electrical stimulation. And in response to that, they generate signals known as action potentials and spikes, which are essentially data communication signals. Professor Manchanda and team study smooth detrusor muscles and neurons of the urinary bladder. They also study the cells of the inner lining of the bladder, called urothelium, and interstitial cells in the bladder walls. What we focus on is the information transmission between nerve and muscle in the urinary bladder. Another aspect is to see how calcium affects various types of function in bladder cells. Experimentally studying the connections between the muscles and neurons of the urinary bladder is difficult as these cells are very small. Professor Manchanda and his team have created detailed computational models of these cells. The models mimic the electrical activity of cells and help in understanding the bladder function. Disturbed communication between these cells results in urinary incontinence. Professor Manchanda also studies medium spiny neurons in the nucleus accumbens, a region in the basal forebrain that is a part of the reward circuit in the brain. The reward circuit controls and regulates the ability to feel pleasure. The nucleus accumbens is considered as the neural interface between motivation and action. We try to work out the properties of 
the medium spiny neurons and how they contribute to the functioning of the nucleus accumbens within the reward circuit. At the Human Motor Neurophysiology and Neuromodulation Laboratory, Professor Nivedita T studies the brain and the associated nerve and muscle networks that enable us to move and precisely control our movements. The ultimate aim here is to understand how these different brain networks are modulated in patients with movement disorders such as Parkinson's disease, dystonia and essential tremor. Specific brain networks are activated to achieve movements of the body. Recently, it has been shown that brain stimulation can be used as a part of therapy in case of movement disorders. We integrate several non-invasive brain recording and stimulation methods to identify the networks that are linked to specific symptoms of movement disorders. So first, to study the movements, we put electrodes on a specific muscle, in this case, the hand muscle, and record the activity in the hand muscle using EMG. So this EMG will record the response of the muscle uh, to a stimulus that is given to the brain. Second, we record the activity in the brain. So this is done by using multiple channels of EEG. So this is again integrated with uh, transcranial magnetic stimulation, a technique that will stimulate uh, the motor region or the brain region that controls your hand muscle. To identify where exactly you want to stimulate, we use the individual's MRI. So the MRI of the individual is used to localize the site of stimulation using TMS. So this is called MRI guided neuronavigation. The information thus gathered can be used to optimize neuromodulation techniques and personalize the stimulations during therapy. Professor Neeta Karnekar's team at the Movement Neuroscience and Rehabilitation Technology Laboratory studies the neural control of human balance and gait and why people fall. Difficulty in walking may result from aging or conditions such as stroke and Parkinson's. In most cases, rehabilitation and physical therapy is the mainstay of treatment. Professor Karnekar and team study how we walk, balance ourselves and how the brain controls our movements so that evidence-based interventions can be designed. The approach we take in our lab to study this involves a brain-to-behavior approach where we have uh, evaluations or assessments done at the brain level using non-invasive brain stimulation. We also do simultaneous recordings from the muscles of the legs and trunk using electromyography. All these methods are non-invasive, safe and painless. And then we have people uh, stand or walk on force platforms and electronic walkway where forces and moments of forces are measured. So we have biomechanical parameters as well. And this we do in healthy young participants, middle-aged and older adults, and people with neurological conditions. Walking needs a lot of attention and cognitive processing. Professor Kanekar studies how walking is affected when the mind is occupied doing other cognitive tasks. We look at the role of cognition. So there are uh, methods we use such as dual tasking where they will uh, do a task, a mental activity while they walk and do the mental activity separately while sitting. Professor Kanekar's team studies standing balance under various conditions that mimic real life scenarios. They study people standing on stable and unstable platforms and how people react to foreseen and unforeseen perturbations while they try to maintain balance. The other arm of our research work uh, focuses on development of technologies for movement rehabilitation, which are either wearable assistive devices for training gait and walking, uh, or uh, these are training devices for training different kinds of motion or balance maintenance. Professor Kanekar's team is working on developing an unpowered, lightweight, wearable assistive device that can assist gait especially for older adults who need minimum assistance for walking. Researchers at IIT Bombay are exploring the fundamental science behind how different components of the nervous system work and how the malfunction of any of the components may lead to disease and disorders. The assistive and therapeutic technologies they are developing are set to improve the quality of life of people suffering from neural conditions.